May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So during this Lenten season, we've been looking at things that we need to give up. And they're not the traditional things like certain foods or social media or whatever, stuff like that. These are things that actually get in the way of our relationship with God. So on the first week, I talked about how we need to give up our reluctance at listening to God's call. On the second week, I talked about how we need to stop trusting ourselves instead of trusting God. On the third week, I talked about how we need to stop our judgments of others because we are just as sinful as they are. And last week, I talked about how we need to give up our wrong views of money and possessions. And now tonight, with this reading from Romans, we hear that we need to give up the fear of death. Right, we don't like the idea of not existing anymore. This is why our world puts so much emphasis on youth and beauty. This is why going to funerals hurts us so much. This is why so many people want to be famous and be known by others. Right, they don't just want to be forgotten to history. Now, maybe you don't see yourself wanting to be a celebrity. Maybe you accept the fact that you're getting older. But even so, many of us still engage in what author Ernest Becker calls Kalsasui projects. In his book, The Denial of Death, Becker defines Kalsasui projects as self-caused projects. In other words, these are the things that we do to try to have some part of ourselves live on after we die. This could be something simple, like writing, I was here on the wall of a bathroom stall. It could be giving lots of money to some organization so you get your name on a plaque. Or the most common one, it could be having children. Right? We assume that future generations will continue to go on after we die. And we want those future generations to remember us. This is why many people do family history or genealogy research. This is why we tell family stories, because we want to remember. And even though we know we'll die one day, we want people to remember us. 
We don't want our lives to be for nothing. But honestly, if you think about it, our focus on ourselves and our individual lives is really quite arrogant. Right, in the grand scheme of things, the age of the Earth is over 4.5 billion years old, and the average human life expectancy is only 72 years. So that means the average human life is 0 0.00000 one six percent of the history of the world. That's a decimal point followed by five zeros and then a one and a six. Or to make it a little easier to understand, if the age of the whole world was a 24-hour day, then the average human life is only 1.38 milliseconds. To put that in perspective, it takes you a hundred milliseconds, one hundred times that amount, to blink your eye one time. In the grand scope of the universe, each of us barely is a blip on the radar. We are not as important as we think we are. So it's no wonder why we're scared of death. It's a reminder that one day our lives will end and history will forget about us. If it even cared to remember us at all. But the good news is that God will never forget us. Think about that. There have been countless numbers of people who have lived on this planet throughout history. And there will be plenty more who live here after we die. And God knows every single one of them. In particular, God knows you. God promises you that death is not really the end. Because God is always about resurrection life. Now remember, resurrection life doesn't mean that you get to live longer. It's not saying that your heart will always keep beating. Rather, it means that you are given a new life. The old has passed away. It has died. It is no more. But now, Something incredible and indescribable is here. As Paul said, For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. Right? Yes, we are often afraid of death. We are often afraid of not existing. We are often afraid that others will forget about us. But God will always remember you. In fact, when your heart does stop beating, God will still give you new life. As Paul wrote, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Think of it like this. When students graduate, either from high school or from college, it can feel like a death. It's the end of life as they knew it, but they're also now on to some new adventures that they never could have imagined before. 
our physical death is very much like that. Although we don't want to leave this familiar life that we've known for so long, there is something incredible for us on the other side. And the best news is that God continues to give us new life even now, before our hearts stop beating. So you have no reason to fear death and no reason to want to live forever because God, who created the universe and the earth all those years ago, this God knows you, loves you, and gives you resurrection life. So let's put our fear of death away, because God is so much stronger than the grave, both now and always. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.